but if I go over bumps, it's obviously going to tip over. Look at it going up the hill spinning. It's because I put the WD-40 on the track to clean it. But it's working. Now a slot car, those little HOs have magnets. So that's not going to be an issue. And I plan on having the slot cars going around. Um, A little closer than I wanted probably to probably gonna end up using this switch on the 65 and this wiring right here this is some good thick like six gauge so this is probably something I'm gonna demo out of here and um, not using it so that's probably gonna go from the cab to the back here it's like it was made for it it fits in there perfectly even that long part up the very front goes up there right beside the fuel cell. And this is what I like about stuff like this. So it was my sprouting table slash where I would uh, work with my plants. All right, we got both panels hooked up in parallel now. I need to order more of these or make some. So this is what it looks like back here. If it was uh, about four inches higher, you could really easily sleep on your side, or at least two inches. Uh, you can definitely sleep back here if you need to. And like I said, the fuel cell, I plan on moving that for now to the back, which I hate to add that extra weight to the rear of the truck, but not, not a real big deal. So the view here is kind of interesting in between these solar panels. It's kind of cool. I'm just kind of laying back here and going, yeah, this would be a cool place to hang out and sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I could just be a nomad in the 65. We'll cruise around the world with our layout, and I can sleep right back here. That would be cool. Yeah, if I uh, hadn't lost weight, it'd be kind of hard to be back here. Because <laughs> uh, there's not much room right there. So I need to grab this switch and the wiring. This was on the old solar, how I linked the two battery banks together. And we're going to put this in our uh, project here. So give me a second and I'll have this out. All right, let's see if we can get this gunk off of here with some WD-40. We'll see if that's going to work. I'm going to hit it right here a little bit. Do one side first. Yeah, it's coming off there. So I'm going to work with this and see what we end up with. Now we need to clean the track. I wish they had a better way of spraying this out. It's like they want you to spray it out really fast so you buy more. So you're going to be surprised how dirty this track is. Look at that. Just that part right there. It's going to have all that grime. And this is just the first stage of cleaning. Just to get it to run across the track. I'm going to do the whole thing and then see what we end up with. Yeah, it's going to make it spin, and but it'll, uh, I'll clean it off more. But yeah, it's going to spin out. Right, I got the six gauge wire hooked into my homemade distribution block here. And I'm going to put the lid back on it. And we're going to go underneath the truck and run the wire now. Got the six gauge positive run up to the where the layout is and routed along here. Tied up with Cat 5 wire and it goes all the way back into the cab where the uh, right there. I just need to put some Velcro around there, sharp edges, and uh, of course that goes back to the battery. So that's done. So we got power back there as soon as I hook it back up to the battery and uh, tidy up the, uh, make a little grommet back there. All right, my ground came loose my, on my test lead. But there we go. That's on and off. I'm going to bump this out next so we can see if we can use this as a speed controller temporarily until I make one. Or we might just keep this if it works good. So I bumped it out. I figured out what pins are what. And... We're going to test her out now, and I got my test leads here, 
to see what kind of voltage we're getting to see how fast it goes with a certain voltage. So this is a light dimmer switch off of a you know square body Chevy truck. So let's see what we got. We turn it a little bit. There goes the train. We'll go wide open here. That's a 13.6 volts right there. That's a good speed. So I'm gonna have to hook a reverse switch up to it next. Track's good and clean. That WD-40 works good. So the start off is a little bit harsh. I can put a capacitor on here to get a slow start. And I've done that before. The cap slowly has to charge up and then it slowly slows down. I'll uh, find a 12 volt cap and put on there and see if we can get us a slow start going here. But yeah, the cap will make it slowly start and slowly slow down. All right, so we don't want this shorten out on anything. So what I'm gonna do is turn it into a distribution block because if those two touch, we're gonna get arky arky. So this is why we got that piece of wood. Let's see which side works better. I kind of like this side better. And then we're gonna put this hot rod in here. And we're going to turn this into a distribution block. Right, so that's what I ended up with. Now we got us a nice little distribution block. Positive, negative. So if I need to clamp onto it, I can. I'm going to put that down there and insulate it with this stuff or this. And then we'll be good. Now we got our half a farad cap. So this should give me a good slow, and, uh, slow start. And uh, this should work. So according to my calculations. All right, this should give us a slow start now. Look at that. And then we'll go wide open. So that is probably about 13 volts, 13 and a half. And then now I'm gonna stop the power and it should give us a slow stop. So I killed the power and that should give us a slow stop. So what's happening there is that chart, that capacitor is having to charge up and discharge. So look how slow that stop is. And I'm just gonna throw power to it and that should give us a, a immediate start because it starts quicker, it charges quicker because I didn't have this resistive load. But I can put a light bulb in there and give us even a slower start. But watch, I'll kill the master switch right there and look how long it goes when I kill the master switch. That capacitor is still discharging. That's the cool thing about dis, uh, capacitors. They charge up really quick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn that that way and that way. And we're going to see how slow of a start we can do. I'm going to put a light bulb in between here to give it a buffer. That's a pretty good slow start. I might not do a light bulb. But I like putting light bulbs and stuff because it adds a little bit of a flare and then I'll turn it off and that's the slow start stop we'll get. So that's working good. The next thing I need to do is build a forward and reverse switch. So let's do that. I actually had to think for five seconds to make sure I wasn't doing this wrong. So if I hook this up wrong, we're gonna have a capacitor pow pow. If I hooked it up right, we should be okay. So I'm gonna throw the power to it, the master power. So far, so good. I should probably be wearing a some protection here so we're going to throw power here and there and we're getting nothing what about here there we go oh the connection's bad on the switch there we go so now we're going to do this we're going to do a forward and reverse now so we got our speed control working so we're going to let it slow down you just don't want to reverse the power on the fly so now here we go reverse and now we got the capacitor charging, discharging. The contacts are dirty. I'm gonna have to clean the contacts on that blade switch. So now we got forward and reverse. So we basically built a speed controller out of stuff I had around the house and it's very analog. It's, this is not, uh, there's no MOSFET chips involved in here. There's just one capacitor to do the discharge and and I got this variable resistor here from the dimmer switch so that's how we're getting this kind of the slow start a little bit too so that helps 
technically we don't need this now that I have the capacitor that gives us the slow start but I can use a regular switch with a light bulb and that will also and that's probably what I'm going to end up doing so I don't have to use this in the project because this is just uh, it's not necessary now that I have the capacitor there so now what we can do is we can go forward and reverse fast and you can see if the power stays to the capacitor it's going to charge really fast and we'll get fast starts and then it'll slow down because right now the capacitor is charging up and see how it's spinning out but if we cut the power to it like that it'll give us a slow start and it'll give us a slow reverse too because the capacitor is not able to charge see that slow back up still discharging the capacitor i'll just barely put some to it so that works so yeah it's pretty involved um i had to use half a ferret capacitor we don't really need this square body light switch this is our master switch and this is our forward and reverse switch so that's how you build a homemade speed controller for a train all right i'm curious to see how long it's going to take for the train to fall over so let's just take a ride around the cul-de-sac I guess I should have primed that primer bubble or primer bulb. We'll see if the truck makes it without the prime. So let's see how far we can go before the train tips over. So we're going on a little bump right here coming out of the driveway. Uh, if the train's spinning. So far it's staying on the track. Oh, it almost fell off right there. So yeah, the uh, at a parade, you know, it'll work on a parade. But if I go over bumps, it's obviously going to tip over. Look at it going up the hill spinning. It's because I put the WD-40 on the track to clean it. But it's working. Now a slot car, those little HOs have magnets. So that's not going to be an issue. And I plan on having the slot cars going around um, the uh, track as well and the track's going to go up around the um, back of the cab so this will be tricky if it falls off here I'm going slow right now I kind of like to make it back to the house without it falling over so I'm kind of riding the clutch here there we go. Now the clutch is completely out, coming around the corner. We're going to speed up a little bit. And I'll obviously uh, have the camera positioned better when I'm doing a parade. But yeah, that worked pretty good. So that's progress. And we'll back it in the garage. I want to see how much, um, curious to see how much power it takes, but we can do that tomorrow. So let's see if we can back it in here without the train falling over, because this is where the, the bumps are. I'm going to retard the timing so we get the lowest idle. Go. Oh, I left the broom in there. Broom is going to be a casualty. There we go. Close enough. It didn't fall over. Awesome. So, that's pretty cool. Let's go stop the train and do a slow stop. We'll speed it up before we slow it down. Let's speed it up here, right there. And I'll just kill the master switch and we'll give us a slow stop here, right here. So there we go. We'll turn the fan on to get the exhaust out. That's progress. And tomorrow 
Uh, I called um, King's Hobby to see. No, I called Scale Electric today to see if they want to sponsor the uh, HO track, the uh, micro scale electric track. I'm not doing standard HO track because um, it's just got so many issues with contacts. I'm going to do the brush type where it's got the brush on the track. So there we go. I'm probably calling it a day. Uh, I need to work and eat. I haven't eaten today, so I need to eat something. I need to do the radio station work, and I need to make this video. The part of video where I butcher up people's chat names and rip and read like a dyslexic. <laughs> All right, so Classic Car Traveler says, uh, I vote green for the indoor-outdoor carpet. It would look like grass around a track. All right, that's one green vote. So Jess Olson, um, backlit or underlit with LEDs, perhaps. All right, cool. So Raven King, I like the beard. Just trim it up a bit. Uh, you'll get ready for winter time. Black would look better, or black for the indoor outdoor in XXO. So KCA TV, uh, wow, that's great news about the fiber. Yeah, so I, I read your whole comment there. So it looks like your Comcast was uh, 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 out for a long time. That sucks. Well, we used to have the same problem with Spectrum here. Um, they kind of cleaned up their act, but I'm liking this fiber. It's um, I downgraded my package to 500 up and down, and I'm still getting over 600 up and over 600 down with the new uh, package, which is cheaper. So I'm really happy with the fiber right now. All right, so uh, Les, Le, Le, Lisa Robertson. Um, I don't. I didn't say that right. Green. So voting green for the indoor outdoor carpet. So Eric says. Um, let's see. Let me read more of this. That's a long message. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a long one. So. Anyway, um, OA in Sweden, I pay $15 a month for a, a gigabit up and down fiber. Wow, that's crazy. $15 a month for a gigabit up and down. That would be awesome. Yeah, here in the States, if you can get fiber, it's about $80 a month for a gigabit here. All right, so Katie says if you skip the carpet, and paint the panels. You could add detail, glow-in-the-dark paint. Um, I understand very little of the tech stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning more towards painting the panels. Uh, the more I'm realizing that I can make little access holes a lot easier. Because if I put indoor and outdoor carpet on there, indoor and outdoor. If I put indoor outdoor carpet, it's going to make everything one solid piece. So. Um, I might just paint the panels flat black. All right, so Ron Watson says black. Black will match. So far, black is winning. Monica Peterson says, uh, I like the skull. You're a genius. Always enjoy your stuff. All right, cool. Thank you. I'm with the black carpet. All right, so if I don't put carpet, I'll paint it black for sure. And then Steve S. says baking soda. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know what I was talking about. All right, so um, today was um, a day where I decided I'm going to, uh, I took the 132nd scale track off there. Obviously, you can see that. And I'm going back with uh, the HO. And I'm not sure if I'm going to leave the train on there, but I'm going to, I might elevate the panels up higher to get more layout space. So, um, I'm still figuring out a design to elevate the panels to where it doesn't look weird, but where it can look part of the layout. So I'm, I'm kind of figuring that one out in my head. Because uh, I just don't have enough real estate back there with the panels taking up so much space, but I got to have the panels for the power for this to work right. So we'll do this again tomorrow. Please like, share, subscribe. Love you all. And um, yeah. Looks like black carpet wins.